Welcome to Lesson 4, State Management in ASP.NET 4. The Internet uses Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, to enable browsers and web servers to communicate with each other. The problem with HTTP is that it is an inherently stateless protocol. This means that every page request is unrelated to every other page request. If you're building a web application that is not that does more than display static data, you need to be able to associate data with a particular user over multiple page requests. ASP.NET simulates state by assigning each user a randomly generated session ID and sending that session ID to the user's browser via a cookie. A cookie is a very small text file stored on a user's computer by the web browser. The browser sends the cookie back to the website with any subsequent requests. In this manner, your website is able to recognize returning users. Now, in the past, cookies have been unfairly maligned. Because cookies are stored on the user's machine, they do raise security concerns. However, they are safe. Cookies store only text. As such, they are not executable. The session object is used to store session state. Each session object is made up of a name value pair. It is used to store information about the current user. By default, the session state is stored in memory. However, that can be configured to be stored in a state machine or in a, in a uh, database. The profile object is another object that, provide, that the ASP.NET framework provides to store user data. The advantages of the profile object over the session object are that it stores the user's data over multiple sessions and it is strongly typed. In this tutorial, you examine the session ID and manage user data using both the session object and the profile object. There are no lesson requirements, and the hints for this tutorial are to use code completion for faster, more accurate data entry, and to use the key combination Control-Shift-W to view the current page in the browser. Get started with this lab. Select New Website, ASP.NET Empty Website, and enter Lesson 4 for the name of the application. And finally, click the OK button. Click the name of the project and select Add New Item. Select Web Form Template and enter session ID.aspx for the name of the new web form. Update the title to Session ID and enter in the text into the div. First put an H1, which is session ID, then enter your session ID colon, and then finally add a literal. The easiest way to do this is to position your cursor where you want the literal, open the toolbox, and double click literal. This will place the literal where your cursor was located. Now change the name of the literal to literal session ID. Right click the page to select view code and enter the following code into the page load event. This literal session ID dot text is equal to session dot session ID. view the page in the browser and you can see the session ID is this long complicated string. Now add another web form this one's named session object dot ASPX Change the title to session object and enter the following code into the div element. In H1 element that says session object, your zip code, and then add another literal 
Once again, we're going to place our cursor and double click the literal object on the toolbox. Change the name of the literal to literal zip code. Right click the page, select view code, and enter the code. This time we're going to set the session zip code equal to a zip code. Now we're going to retrieve that session object and view it in the text for the literal. So entering this dot literal a zip code, which will bring up the literal that we just created, dot text. And because it's not typed, we have to tell it it's going to return a string, that we're actually storing a string in the session object, and then just say the session zip code. Now save the pages and view that page in the browser. And there it is, it read the session object and displayed it in the browser. Now we're going to do the profile object. In order to do that, we need to open the web.config and configure the profile element within the uh, system web element of the web.config file. This is really simple to do using IntelliSense. It guides you along every step of the way. We're going to add a group name of preferences, and within preferences we're going to have a theme and a currency. Now these will be my personal preferences that are going to be stored in a database. Now I need to add the web form for the uh, profile object. Change the title to profile object for this web form. And within the div, enter a profile object, your selected theme, and once again we're going to place a, a literal by placing our cursor and then double clicking the literal con server control that is on the tool box. Change the name of the literal to literal theme. Right click the page to go to the view code. Within the page load event, add a profile.preferences.theme is equal to retro to actually set the theme. And then read the theme by using this.literalTheme.text and setting it equal to profile.preferences.theme. Now note in this case you don't have to tell it that it's returning a string because profile objects are strongly typed and whatever type is stored is the type that is going to be retrieved. Now let's save that. And there's our profile object. Now you're probably wondering where that data is being stored. If we do a refresh, you can see there's an app data folder, and inside of it is a SQL Server 2008 Express database. Within that database is a table called Profile, and this is the default location for the profile database. You can actually store this database anywhere you would like. It does not have to be within the app data folder of your application. If we view uh, the table, this is the data, and there's our property value, retro.